is being recorded. And Dondi, it's over to you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. So glad you could be here. Today, we are going to make this so fun, so summery, a um, little bit tropical um, wreath on our extruded form. And then I'm going to show you a fun way to um, switch it up for your autumn or fall months, too. Like I said, I'm Dondi from Floor Craft. We also have Tony on chat, so she will um, read your questions to me and we'll do our best to get them answered today. Um, so today, we're going to use the 14 inch uh, extruded wreath. Um, it, our extruded does come in white, white, so you can make it any color you want, green, because it blends nicely with, with the florals. Um, for this one, we are wrapping it. So, I mean, either one would work for this project. All right, and then if we can go to top down, I will show you all the fun stuff I found at Michael's. So to cover the wreath, um, actually on this one, I used just a, um, just a smooth burlap, uh, flat burlap, and I liked it. But then I found this um, frayed burlap at Michael's that I really thought was fun. So I'm gonna try this one with the frayed and just see what the difference is. Need that. And then um, to do this fun little accent, um, the macrame on the bottom of the wreath. I use this macrame cord from Loops and Threads, but I did find this other, um, and this is just cotton cording. Uh, this is from Bead Landing. And uh, I did a, a braid with that too, just to show you the difference and has a little bit of different color. And if you can't find the macrame, cotton cord will work just the same. I think even um, even jute would work. That, yeah. and then your florals. I found these uh, green hydrangea, kind of a fun pop of color, and I found the um, and you know hydrangeas or. Um, whatever uh, big bulky fluffy flower in this color doesn't have to necessarily be a hydrangea and then i found these um like a fuchsia or a bright pink flower and again they don't have to be the exact flower just um you'll need two four like six blossoms in like a hot pink color and then these guys just a fun bright orange color and um, can be any flower. I'm just going by color. So these stems all have looks like a, a full blossom, a medium blossom, and then just a bud. So there's three flowers on each one and I got four stems of those. The pink I had three stems of. And then just this fun filler I found um, has a little bit of like a fern um, greenery and then this uh, like pink little baby, almost like a baby's breath, but not. Um, but again, anything would work, any kind of fun greenery filler. And then I liked this um, just to give it a little bit of a vine sticking out here and there. So this is just a green vine, it has three branches on it. Um, I grabbed a couple of those. And these are all listed on the on the um, class. So then I found this um, palm, like palm ferns or plant branches. And there's like three, six, there's like 10 of these on there that we use. So whatever you can find that you can get about 10 branches will work. And then again, too, any color that you find and you don't quite like the color, remember you can, um, 
you can spray paint flowers. Just give them a light, a light mist of some color and you can darken or tint your flowers to whatever color you need them to be. And two, remember the class is being recorded. So if you get behind or of course, if you need me to show you something again, I can do that. But if you do get behind, it is being recorded and it'll be on Michael's site uh, 12 to 24 hours. So some of your tools that you're gonna need today, um, you're gonna need greening pins. And these are over in the floral department and they're just a U-shaped pin. And they, um, they work nice for holding on mosses and ribbons and such into our foam. You'll need some scissors to cut your burlap and your cord. You'll need some um, diagonal cutters or wire cutters to cut your stems. Using a glue gun. Um, this is a low temp glue gun. I found at Michael's just the Craftsmart brand and um, you want to use low temp because high temp a lot of times will melt our foam. So the first thing I did to get started was just get this wreath wrapped. And to do that, I just took one of the floral pins, lay your um, burlap on the back of the wreath and lay it kind of at an angle because it'll help it lay nicer as you wrap it. So just take your pin, put it in at a little bit of an angle because the pin is a little bit longer than the wreath is deep and you don't want it coming out the front. So just stick it in at an angle like that. And we're just gonna start wrapping around and you're just gonna slightly overlap every wrap just to make sure that it gets foam covered. Where do we have people calling from today, Tony? We have Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Athens, Alabama. Those are the only two that have popped it in the chat. If anyone else wants to pop in the chat where you're calling from or where you're tuning in from and if you're crafting along with us or later. Yeah. We have a Dallas, Texas, California, New York City. Fishers, Indiana, another New York, Brooklyn, Houston, Monterey, California, or Atkinson, Wisconsin is crafting along. Nice. Oh, nice, everybody could join us. We're here from the little town of Ludington, Michigan. And it's been, well, I'm not even going to say that it's been hot because it's not been hot here compared to what it's been in other parts of the U.S. for sure. All right, so it looks like one of these is not going to do it. So if you get this little frayed burlap, you're going to need one. And then actually, you could probably get away with just stopping there because your flowers are going to cover so much of it. Um, but if you want to add more, what I do when I run out is just make sure that you pin it at the back so you don't see it from the front. And then I snip that off and restart with a new one. And actually you could pull that pin right back out, lay your other piece on top and pin them both at the same time. Dami, could you do this with a wire wreath instead? Um, yeah, I, I think you could. Um, you just wouldn't wouldn't wrap it with burlap, just do it on a wire wreath, or do you mean the, the work form, the green work form? Could you use a wire wreath instead and wrap it? Yes. Absolutely, you could. And I don't know, I haven't, I haven't talked about our foam lately. I've kind of um, left out the part that um, 
our foam is actually recycled now. So we, um, we take coat hangers that would normally go from the retail stores that would normally go into the landfill and we recycle them back into our foam. So using foam is, you know, some people think, you know, it's plastics, it's bad for the environment, but Floracraft has really gone a long way in making sure that we help protect this earth and turn our foam into a greener product, so. All right, so it looks like some of the little fuzzies on our, on our frayed burlap are a little flat on one side, a little shorter, but you won't really see that much of it. And I think what I'll do, because I kind of like the looks of this feathery part, is I'll put my flowers up here and leave this down here to show. So, first flowers I started with are the hydrangea, or at least I think. So, I'll cut those cords just to get off. And we're gonna cut this stem pretty short, but save your leaves because we'll use them if we need to fill in. So you're gonna cut eh, about an inch, a little over an inch, because you don't want it to poke through to the to the back of the wreath. So I'm cut it about about an inch and a quarter maybe. And then this um, burlap is actually kind of loose, so you can really just get that stem in between the little fibers threads and just pop that right in and all I did was put these first three in about I don't know four or five inches apart and then we'll fill in between them if you can't get in between those little fibers just um just take your scissors and make a little hole you can do that too right through those little fibers. We're just gonna space these three. About like that. So you have a good, um, about two or three inches between them. All right, and we'll save all of our leaves in case we want them to fill in. And then the next ones I placed were these bright pinks. And really, this is a really easy design because whatever you do on one side of the wreath, you're going to do the same thing on this side of the wreath. So again, you're gonna cut it to about an inch, about all you need. Maybe a little more if you want it to pop up a little higher. Maybe do them ones about, maybe do them about two inches. So they stand up with, um, with the tops of the hydrangea or whatever flowers you're using. So, um, on the stems that I used, some of them are larger and some of them are smaller. So I'm using the two bigger buds here at the top. About like that. And then I'll put another pink one down here. And one down here. So you, you see the pattern, you see where this is going, right? And then I also added a couple down here in front of each side hydrangea. That just brings that pink color out around to the 
all the way around your wreath. And once you're happy with your pink, you can go back in with your orange. Or whatever, what other colors? I mean, they don't have to be these exact colors, but. Um, whatever colors you're using, just remember whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. So if we put an orange one over here. We'll put one on the other side. Maybe turn that one out and that one in a little so they're not right on top of each other. And also, I'm not gluing these stems in um, just for sake of time, but really, um, every time you put a stem into the foam, because this plastic is so slippery, there's no, um, there's no texture on it, you should really just add a little dab of glue right on the end of the stem and then insert it into the foam and, oops. And that will hold it in there so it doesn't get pulled back out. We'll add some more orange out here. And over here. And we'll come down by this. So what are some of the things people have on their doors now? Do we decorate with wreaths or flowers or what are some of the things people put on their doors? Anybody? Focus today. I personally like taking home these crafts that you make after Michael's show ends. <laughs> All right. We got lots of compliments on the 4th of July wreath I had on my door. Nice. All right, so we're just spreading this color around where you have a little bit of, a little bit of orange everywhere, a little bit of pink everywhere. That's really all we're doing, just spreading the color. She said she has a patriotic mini quilt on her door, but she usually has rates. Oh, okay. That's a cool idea. All right, so it looks like I have everything kind of spaced out. You can see pinks everywhere, oranges everywhere. So then I came in with my vine and this can be any vine. This one's listed um, in the, on the, Class, but um, not not remembering what the name of it is. All I did was just cut sections of it, just little lengths of it, maybe six inches or so, and just kind of go in between the flowers and come in, kind of hanging out here and there. And just remember what you do on one side will do on the other. Just kind of keep it uniform ish. -ish. We'll go with this up at the top. Okay. 
Okay, a little each side. Just peeking out here and there just to give it a little dimension. And you can make them go wherever you want. There's a few little spots of green. Looks like we'll put some coming out from the inside too. Maybe hanging from the inside like that. Yep, and maybe some like right in between the flowers. And just let them stick out and be. This is kind of a fun kind of free form wreath. Kind of does what it wants. There. That might do it for the for the ivy or the vine, whatever you're using. That's looking pretty good. Maybe a couple little pieces here. And don't be afraid to cut those links down shorter if you don't want the ivy to hang too far out. You can cut it into sections and use pieces of the vine. All right, that looks good to me. Then I put this fun little filler and I just cut it apart in pieces. And use this to fill in between all the flowers. And it's kind of fun, it kind of moves a little. Just a dainty little color. And on this filler, it has this fun little light burny stuff on the bottom of the stem too. And I just like that texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a few of these filler leaves in just to give it another texture. I think the more textures you can put in something, the more interesting it is. It's just so much to see. So every time you look at it, you're like, oh yeah. That's good too. Dandi, do you have any tips for keeping the silk flowers clean when they're on the doors so they don't, because they get dirty? Well, um, I don't know if we're keeping them from getting dirty. Um, I mean, I know one of the things that I've used to spruce up wreaths for getting pictured or photographed 
is um, used canned air, like that you use to, to clean your computer keys and stuff with. And that kind of blows all the dust and dirt off of them without, without hurting them. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know how to keep them from getting dirty. So I'm just using this filler just to anywhere that I want a little bit of that white color and a little pop. And don't forget around the outside edge too. You want to add your filler so you can see it from all sides. And remember, if you can't quite get it in that burlap, just take your scissors and kind of jab a hole. And that'll help you get through that fiber or fabric. Let's see how we do. doing. Looks like we need some up here. A little bit. And then I'm on the inside. So you have some sticking out into your center of your wreath. Oh, it looks like so we're filling in. It looks like you can see a little bit of everything. I'm going to add a little bit more of this, this fun ferns. Yeah, you can see that little bit sticking out of there, and it just adds just enough. Just another texture. Compliments you're getting. We have stunning, love the delicate flowers with the bold ones, so pretty. Mm -hmm. Love it, the mix of soft flowers and bright ones is lovely. Nice, thank you so much. So glad you like it. Did you guys get to, did you guys do the, um, the class with the summer citrus wreath? That one was real fun too. Got a lot of likes on that one. All right, so it's filling in. See, it's just kind of wild and crazy, kind of does its own thing. That's what makes it fun. I'm gonna add a few more of these little feather ferns. Anybody have any questions for me? Right now, everyone's just mesmerized with the beauty of this wreath. Aww. All right, I think that kind of does it. I think I got the feather fern in enough places. Maybe one more right at the top. That's the only place I didn't. Put any yet. There we go. The orange flower is trying to get away. All right. <clears throat> now for the fun little palms. 
that make it look so tropical and so fun. I took them and just cut them off individually. And you know, a good inch, two inches is fine. And all I did with these guys is I put them around kind of the outside edge. So I would do one here at the top. And we're going to let those hang out further than kind of everything else. Just let them steal the show. And on this particular brand or stem that I bought, some of them are quite a bit smaller in, in size than, than others. So I just used these smaller ones on the inside of the wreath. Um, if you don't, if yours are all the same size or if you don't have quite the same stem, you can cut the, the palm down and just use parts of it would be fine. A couple on the inside. And then more around the outside edge, maybe here by these orange. And just remember to keep your your stems. You want to add a little bit of glue to the end of these stems and that'll keep them in your wreath. Keep them from pulling out. If it's on the door and it's jiggling around and just keep it from coming apart on you. So just a little glue on the tip of that. And then as it pushes into the wreath, it'll push that glue into the foam and then hold it in there for you. And over here by these orange. Roll down towards the bottom. Not like that. That's just giving it a fun, kind of crazy tropical vibe. And then do a couple on this inside and just let them kind of hang. Down with these bottom flowers. Kind of, oh. There. That's kind of it for the floral part of it. Well, when I finished it, I just felt like it needed something down here. I don't know. I mean, I like it just like this. You could absolutely stop and just leave it to burlap and I think it would be fine. But what I did is I took three, um, so I braided it, but I braided it with three strands each. So nine strands total. So you'll need nine pieces about five and a half feet long. I guess, I mean, that should do it. You could do it six foot to make sure that you have plenty, but, um, I did this one with the cord. This is the cotton cord. <laughs> no, no. All I did was taped, I just taped the top of it to my table and um, to hold it in place. And then I just started braiding. Um, I'll take this apart and show you. Hey, Donnie, can you give the numbers again, how many pieces and for how long? Yep. So the, the 
number of pieces is nine. So what I did is I took three strands together to do the braid. So you'll need nine strands at, at about five and a half, six feet long. We'll do it for you. And when I braid this, you don't wanna braid it super tight. You wanna just leave it a little bit loose. So you're barely laying over and just letting it kind of lay there. You're not tightening it at all. I'll lay that one in, bring these three over just very lightly. And it's just a simple braid, just a, just a hair braid, nothing fancy. And just keep it so that all your cords are laying flat. You don't want them twisted over top of each other. You want them all laying side by side real nice while you braid. Don't let them get, don't let them get um, crossed. So does anybody want to see that again or is that, is that good? Yeah. All right, so then when I end, just going to take all of these the same length or close. And then take another piece of cord, make sure these guys are all I'm going to put this one in here. So when you get them all Nope, I'm gonna unwrap one. So you wanna leave, we're gonna leave it so that it's about, your, your tails are about two inches long. So that might do it. So then get them and just let them all lay flat like that, all side by side. And then you're gonna take your glue and just right where your braid stops, just run a bead of glue across the front and add your cording to that glue strip. You guys see that much? And this is your front. You're gonna add your cording to that glue strip, let it dry, flip it over <clears throat> and glue it to the back. And this is just going to keep your braid from unraveling, basically. All this does. If you have a really cool way, if you do macrame and you have a cool way of knotting this at the end so that you don't have to do this step, you could do that. But that's my way to keep it together. So that's that. And then all I did, and just leave the length all together. So what I did is I just took and left like a little bit of a tail and took my pins, probably about, I'd say a good, maybe four inch tail and you're gonna fold it kind of at that point and then tuck it up under the end of your flowers and pin it in place up under your flowers. So just like, just like that and just pin it in place so it'll stay. And then to get that fun, um, This fun look, it almost looks like a macrame knot, but it's actually just scrunched braid. So now you're just gonna take your, your braided cotton rope or macrame cord and you lay it on your wreath and just, just squish it up to itself. And see how it widens that braid and it makes it different than just a braid. 
So that's all I did is just, it just push it together. It just widens that braid out and it compacts all those little um, braids, I guess. <clears throat> So you bring it up and then to hold it in place and keep it like that. I just took the, um, the uh, greening pin again and just go underneath uh, a layer of cord and pin in place. And then you can pull that cord back down and it'll hide that pin. Again, you just peel up a little braid Take the pin, pin it under, and push that back down. That just keeps it all scrunched in the way that you want it to stay. And then we'll pin it one more time here. And then we leave another little tail on this side. So I'm going to pin that right up under this flower to hold it in place. And we're going to let this tail hang, but not quite as far as this one. I let this one hang a little bit off the reef. And then this one, I have only um, maybe about a three inch tail. But I don't want to um, get rid of this, the rest of this. So what I did was where I wanted it, I just cut that off. Yeah, about, yeah, that's probably good. Just cut it off the length that you want. Leave it right there. Grab you another piece of cording. And Lay them all side by side like you did with the other one and then secure it with another piece of cord. So you're going to take your glue again and run it right across the front of your all your cords. You want all nine of them all lined up nice and lay that piece of cord across the top. And then once it's dry. You can turn it over and do it to the back. And that's going to keep all your cords from unraveling, unbraiding. All right. And then if you want, you can take the time to unravel, untwist all these little cords and make it kind of fun and braid if you want. And just basically untwisting them. So they unravel a little bit. And that gives a fun texture too. Like so. And it'd be fun too um, if you took maybe do different colors of rope. So maybe do like the scent, every, all the um, center of the braid, maybe a different color. That'd be kind of fun. So I'm just unraveling these just to give it a little, a little different look. All right. It looks like I'm gonna add another pin up here too. This doesn't want to stay real well. There we go. All right, and then you can see the difference. <clears throat> the macrame cord is a little bit lighter. It's a little 
brighter white than this um, bead landing, the copper rope or cotton rope, copper. So just a different look, whatever you want to, whatever you want to use. All right. And then what you have left here, I turned into the hanger for the top of the wreath. So this side, you can go ahead and glue off these ends. These don't necessarily have to be all in a line. You're just, you're just wanting to hold them together. So. And add your glue. And this one doesn't have to be pretty because you're not going to see it. It's just the hanger. All right. <clears throat> then the top. All I did was made a knot. And I actually, on mine, I think I only used three, but I'm going to show you it with this just because this will be chunkier and it might look cool too. Where's the... And then just pull that knot as tight as you can get it. Oh, wait, did I do that? I don't even have water in there. All right, don't do that. Untie it. Okay, we're going to leave this loop. For the hanger. <clears throat> okay, I feel like I just made a mess. There it is. All right, change plans, guys. All right, so leave about <clears throat> leave about three inches of of your braid for the hanger, and then this back part to make the loop to hang it from. We're just gonna go like this, make that all into a loop. So you have a loop like that. Then we are going to tie that loop at the top. On the back, you want to tie it on the back. From this, you're going to want to tie super tight because that's going to be your Hanger. And then all these extras from looping it back, let's we'll get rid of. So then this part you will glue and pin to the back of the wreath, and then this part becomes your hanger. So let's see, I just put a I just put a loop at the top basically. And then to make sure that it stays secured, I would just glue a bunch of glue around this knot and around where you have it wrapped. And that'll just keep anything from pulling out of there. 
All right, and then just take your wreath. I would put quite a bit of glue on the back side of this bottom piece here and just really add a lot of glue. You don't want it coming on. And glue that right to the back. And add a couple pins. And you see that I'm wiggling the pin back and forth and back and forth. A lot of times if it can't find a hole to poke into, if you wiggle it back and forth, it kind of separates whatever's in its way and lets it shove through. So that's it. And then that will be your little hanger. I think I glued it on there backwards. And then you would just hang that on your wreath hanger or whatever you have at home. So that is the wreath as a summer fun tropical wreath. Now to switch it out, all you would have to do, I found these fun, um, almost black, purple hydrangea also at Michael's. So all I did to turn this from summer to fall, so you're gonna take the heads of these hydrangea, cut them again at about an inch, pop these out and they will pull out with glue. It might take a little bit. And if they don't, you could always take your nippers and get in there and just cut them off and then leave that old stem right in there and push these in right next to it if you're having trouble getting them out. So I'm just going to take out the green and this has a little bit bigger stem so you're probably going to have to cut your burlap a little to allow that in there. But we add that purple in place of the green. And you can take out the palm if you think that looks too summery. Um, or leave it in. That's up to you. I like the um, I like the orange and the pink still. You see a lot of Halloween now with the brighter colors. It's kind of fun. And I don't even mind these little white guys in here for the fall. There it is. And then um, you could take the purple out and you could replace it with some purple. This isn't thistle, it looks kind of like it. I couldn't find any thistle for this class, but I really thought that these dried kind of funny Little guys were kind of fun in here. They add a little. So that's something else you could add in is some more purple with all of these colors. Um, I'll just show you a couple just so that you can see what it looks like in there. That just adds a little bit. And these hydrangea are a little, little bigger than the green ones, but um, you could spread them out a little bit. And you can add in some of, so if you didn't want the, the summery palms, you could take those out and you could add in just some 
leaves off your hydrangea, or you could add in fall leaves to get some of those fun, uh, more fun fall colors in here. So either way, you could you could swap out your palms with the leaves from your hydrangea or or fall leaves, whatever you feel. So let me lay these side by side and you guys can see the difference in the, the summer and the fall. Just a quick, you know, and these are really big now that I see them on camera. Um, if you do find these these bigger hydrangea, a lot of times you could just clip out. You could clip out these outer and use these on another project or fill them back in this wreath if you don't want yours to be that big. Seeing that made it a little smaller. Just clipping off those outside branches. And then you could use these in and around to add more of that purple color throughout your wreath if you wanted to do that. If you find that these are just too big. All right. Any questions for me? No? Doesn't look like it in the chat. All right, well, I guess I'll hold these up and uh, we'll say goodbye then if you guys don't have anything else. So whichever way you wanna use them, kind of a fun pop of color fall or a fun summer wreath. Oh, and that one's, see that's why you need to pin it because then it don't sag like that. I need one more pin right there. Don't be afraid to use too many pins. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for making it fun with Floorcraft. Until next time. <laughs>